On today's episode of Locked On Wilds, the Colorado Avalanche won the 2021-2022 Stanley Cup. We'll take a look at what they did to get there behind a dominant top six. Your Locked On Wild, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Wild. We are your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, and we are your team each and every day. We thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. On today's episode of Lockdown Wild, we continue taking a peek at the last few Stanley Cup winners to see what it took for them to get to the Stanley Cup final and ultimately win the Stanley Cup trophy. We'll take a look today. At the Colorado Avalanche, my name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and uh, two episodes for you here today. We'll uh, talk to Isha Jerome of the Soda Pod to take a peek at the Tampa Bay Lightning from 2020, 2021 to finish off the week here. But this Colorado Avalanche team is one that is hard not to be impressed with, considering everything that they were able to do and considering the just glut of scoring that they brought to the table uh, for this group. Just a ton of different ways that they could attack you. And it's really no surprise that uh, the Avs were able to uh, ultimately win the Stanley Cup because they have so many or had so many great names on this team. And all of those great names elevated when it came to the Stanley Cup playoffs. So Let's just take a look first to kind of the overview of uh, the season for the Avs. They finished with the second most points in the NHL. They had 119, 56, 19, and 7. For the Avs, they were fourth in the NHL in goals scored with 308. And goals allowed, the Avs were ninth with 232 power play abs were seventh in the NHL with 24% and on the penalty kill, the abs actually uh, 15th at 79.7%, but still really good on offense, really, really good on defense and uh, on the power play as well. Certainly plenty to be able to uh, carry this abs team up the mountain, but just if we remember back to that 2021 2022 season obviously it was a great season for the Minnesota Wild from a scoring perspective uh but just look at these names of these players that were on that Colorado Avalanche roster from 2021 2022 you had Miko Rantanen, Nathan McKinnon, Nazem Kadri, Kale McCarr, Andre Burakovsky, Gabriel Landeskog, Devon Taves, Valeri Nishushkin Those players all had 50 or more points. And you'll notice that there are two defensemen in that uh, grouping of eight. Two defensemen and pretty much all of your top six. Just just an unbelievably good unit that the Avs had for that season. And not only that, but looking at a goals perspective, you had Rantanen leading the way with 36. McKinnon with 32, Landeskog had 30, Kadri and Makar had 28 apiece, Valeri Nishuskin had 25 goals, Andre Burakovsky had 22 goals, JT Comfer had 18, and then you had Devon Taves, Alex Newhook, and Nicholas Abe Kubel all in double figures with 13, 13, and 11, respectively. So a ton of firepower for this Colorado Avalanche team. And you think about it too, Rantanen, McKinnon, and Landeskog. So that's your top line. You've got 92, 88, and 59 points. But also, 
36, 32, and 30 goals. That's a frightening unit to have to contend with. And that's their top line. Their second line was Nazem Kadri, Andre Burakovsky, and Valeri Nashuskin. And there, 28, 22, and 25 goals. And from a points perspective, 87, 61, 52. So you're talking about just an insane amount of scoring and punch and firepower that you can bring to the table. How do teams contend with that? How are you supposed to try to stop that mix? And then not even adding in what you get with Kale McCarr and Devon Taves on defense. But then you also have players like Samuel Gerard, Eric Johnson, Bowen Byram in the early part of his NHL career. But Jack Johnson, a dependable veteran, Curtis McDermott. You've got some very dependable back end defensemen, and they can be that because you have the offense to be able to handle things on their own. And you don't have to you don't have to have defensemen that can you know that have to fill in have to step in to take care of business on defense because your offense is just able to do that over and over and over again and so that led to the avs having the season they did and it it just continued through the postseason like they they only lost four total games in the four round series, they swept Nashville. They won four to two against St. Louis in the second round. They swept the Oilers and then they won four games to two against the Tampa Bay lightning. And that Tampa Bay lightning team was in their third straight Stanley cup final. And the abs for the most part made it, uh, made it look pretty easy. I mean, Edmonton has always been a really good team, but, they had no answer for what the uh, the Colorado Avalanche did in the conference finals. And so it really just from start to finish was in as impressive of a season as you can have for an organization. Like there was a little bit of a slow start through the end of November. The Avs were 11-6-1. Um, but they righted the ship. They had a handful of games postponed in the middle of December. But then, you know, from January until the end of the year, just a an incredible run that the uh, Avs went on to put themselves in position to really, um, really be in a good position to control things throughout the postseason. Now, the interesting part of this equation is you have all this offense, you have all this firepower, and the Avs were rolling with Darcy Kemper as their primary goaltender. They they had the combination of Darcy Kemper at 31 years old and pa- Pavel Francouz, who was also 31. They started the majority, they started 79, or uh, excuse me, they started 75 of the 82 games for the Avs that season. Now, Kemper's numbers were pretty good, 37, 12, and 4. He had a 921 save percentage and a 254 goals against average, five shutouts. So I guess I should say they were pretty darn good. And then Francis was 15, 5, and 1 with a 2.55 goals against average and a 916 save percentage. You get to the postseason. Kemper was 10 and 4 with a 2.57 and a 902. Francis was 6 and 0 in his 7 appearances with a 2.81 goals against average and a 906 save percentage. So, the numbers are good for the goaltenders. They're not like they're not great numbers by any stretch. And so this Avs team really was like let your offense just carry you through. And of course I'm, I'm simplifying quite a bit. Um, but 
this this Avs team really was built on the strength of their top six and what they were able to do with the uh, the top end of their defense. And they just they rode that all the way through to the uh, inevitable Stanley Cup trophy. So this one was interesting because, you know, there was the talk of all the talk was about the Florida Panthers, a team that averaged four goals a game, over four goals a game the entire season. And then they are not able to even get to the uh, Stanley Cup final. So the Avs, you know, one of the best teams in the league that year, and it uh, it comes down to a strong foundation. We'll talk about that foundation a little more, as well as some of the lessons the Wilds can pull from the 2021-2022 Colorado Avalanche and their Stanley Cup trophy. We'll talk about that as we continue today's episode of Lockdown Wild after this. Today's episode of Lockdown Wild is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Reminder to stay tuned for our second episode coming later today. Isha Jerome of the Soda Pod joins us as we discuss the 2020-2021 Tampa Bay Lightning and look at some of the things that they brought to the table as Stanley Cup champions and what the Wilds can learn from their title run. So the big things that stand out to me, obviously that top six. And for the Colorado Avalanche, it is an impressive mix of homegrown talent and finding players to add into the mix to kind of um, piggyback off of that for, you know, supplementing those players you look at nathan mckinnon he was a number one overall pick by the colorado avalanche back in 2013 so he was a draft and developed player that has obviously turned into one of the best if not the best player on the planet but as we've talked about previously you don't really get a chance to get those players that often unless you're in that position to be able to draft them and Ever since the 2013-2014 season, McKinnon has been just an an absolute unbelievable force for that Colorado team. Miko Rantanen, he was the 10th overall pick in 2015 by the Colorado Avalanche. So you add him into the mix as well as a uh, homegrown talent that has uh, helped create, you know, that um, helped create that monster in which the uh, the abs have at their disposal gabriel landeskog same thing he was the number two overall pick in 2011 now he has dealt with injuries over the last few seasons and so he has not been as much of an impact as he was previously but especially on that uh, run to the stanley cup title in 2021 2022 a 30 goal season and he was the captain for a reason. So a huge part of what the Avs were able to bring to the table um, for that season. You look at a name like Valeri Nishuskin. He was a player who was brought in 
via free agency to add to that mix was drafted by the Dallas stars and then came to Colorado, signed a contract with the Colorado avalanche and uh, has the, since signed a massive extension to stay. So draft and develop sign players that can be good complementary fits for those guys in your, um, you know, those core guys. And in the case of the avalanche, it's not like they've, it's not as though they are immune to having to replace players on the roster. Look at what happens to Nazem Kadri. He ended up leaving after that cup run because the abs didn't have enough money to pay him what he thought he was worth. And so he departed for the Calgary flames. Now, Hasn't worked out as well for him in Calgary as it did in Colorado, but that's that's the price you pay sometimes, is that you may be going for the money and going to a situation in which you're less likely to win a cup as opposed to taking a little bit of a discount to stay with the team that is a legitimate contender every single season. So the Avs, what they did was they, they identified the players that were part of the core group. McKinnon, Rantanen, Landeskog. They added complementary pieces like Nishuskin. Arturi Lekkinen would be another name that I would throw into that mix. But they just have continued to... They've continued to shuffle the deck, which is something that I think has been most impressive about continuing to be as good as they have been. They continue to find ways to shuffle the deck. This past season, and I've used the everydayers know I've used this example previously in talking about Colorado, but it's one that rings really true. The Avs identified a weakness this past season. Didn't really have a solid second line center. And so they went out and they dealt from a position of strength, which for them was defense. They sent Bowen Byram to the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for Casey Middlestat because that's what good teams do. Good teams deal from a position of strength to grab something that they need on the roster. Now, this, this can go, this can take a variety of forms. If you are a team that is really strong in the draft picks department, you deal from a position of strength and you target a player or some position to add to the roster. Maybe it's young talents, prospects. Then you go that route. In the case of the Avs, they've got Kale McCarr. You've got Devon Taves. And so for Bowen Byram, unless he was able to supplant Devon Taves on that top pairing, you know, he th that was a move that the Avs felt they could take a calculated risk and bring in somebody in Casey Middlestad who filled a massive hole for them. Now, ultimately, they lost in the postseason this past year, but those are the kinds of decisions that good teams make is, hey, we have a surplus at this particular position and we have a uh, really big need elsewhere that we would love to be able to address um, somehow. So those are some of the things, you know, that stand out to me about this Colorado avalanche team is that as, as much as we talk about the Dallas stars kind of right now being a good example of like, here's what a, pro here's what a product looks like when you draft and develop and you make some trades, you sign some players to kind of complement what they bring. The Colorado Avalanche definitely got there first. Like they definitely got the draft and develop model right before the Dallas Stars did. And uh, again, I I go back to the point that I think a lot of people make and there are a lot of different circumstances that go into why teams don't do this as much. But if you want the like game breaker type player in the lineup, you're not going to luck into that in the draft. 
you have to be willing to kind of wade out into the muck to go get somebody like that, that can turn your franchise around. But this requires, this is, and we'll talk about this a little bit to finish the show. This requires having a quick plan as a general manager. And I'm not talking about like hitting the panic button per se, but I'm talking about the ability to quickly pivot. And so we'll talk about the lessons that can be learned from this Colorado Avalanche Stanley Cup run and uh, some other things that the Wild need to uh, keep in mind as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Today's episode of Locked on Wild is brought to you by Game Time. We are already midway through the month of August, which is crazy, which means Major League Baseball is gearing up for the stretch run. Minnesota Twins find themselves currently in the thick of the postseason push. And so there's no better time to head out to Target Field and enjoy seeing the Minnesota Twins out on the field against their Central Division rivals or some of the other teams that they get a chance to play here down the stretch. Game time can help make your Major League Baseball ticket experience a breeze. Not only do ticket prices actually go down the closer you get to the event, but Game Time has a ton of great features that can help make your ticket buying experience enjoyable. You can save on zone deals when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats. Plus, you get views of every seat in the arena. And I've keyed in on this a lot because it's a new feature. Target Field has those pontoon seats in right field. You can check out your view from those while you're in the Game Time app. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. One final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, we thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. A couple of reminders for you. Make sure to send us a screenshot of your subscription to Lockdown Wild on YouTube and uh, email it with your name to lockdownwild at gmail.com so that you can get entered in for the Lockdown Wild sweepstakes. We'll be giving away two tickets to see the Minnesota Wild take on the Columbus Blue Jackets opening night, October 10th at the X. Uh, full contest rules can be found in the description of this episode. You have until the beginning of October to get your submissions in. We already have a good amount of them, so keep them coming for your chance to win tickets. Also, August 25th, 12 to 3 at Zamboni's on 7th. Locked on Wild's live meet and greet episode will be going on. Make sure to stop out and say hello. Uh, should be a fantastic time and a good way to kind of wind the summer down and gear us up for hockey, which will be uh, getting back rolling here before we know it. So taking a look at some of the things to consider for this Colorado Avalanche team. Uh, obviously, the big one here is the draft and develop approach, because not only do you have the likes of McKinnon, of Rantanen, of Landeskog, but you have other players that have been developed through the system to be able to help this Avs team out. Obviously, Nathan Mc or uh, Kale McCarr is a big one. He was a high draft pick that has developed and turned into one of the premier defenseman in the NHL you don't just luck into those guys like if you are and this is something that you know I I see a lot of people saying well teams aren't just going to tank to put themselves in position because players aren't going to quit you know and there is there is something to that but there's a reason that these players get drafted, you know, first, second, third overall is because they are generational type talents. Kirill Kaprizov is a fantastic example of why you don't necessarily have to, like, you don't have to rely on that front of the first round to get generational talents, but it certainly helps. And 
this has been something that the Wilds have consistently throughout their tenure. They've consistently been more of a uh, middle of the road slash playoff team as opposed to putting themselves in position to, you know, maybe draft a little higher. It, it's all a, it's all circumstance. Like you, you're not going to go into a season and say, look, we're not going to be, we're not going to be good at all. So we're just going to not try this season. Like that's not how, that's not how things work, but taking advantage of opportunities when they arise. Like if you're, if you're completely out of it, there's a big difference between drafting 18th and 12th in the, uh, in the standings. Now, Judd Brackett over the last few years has maximized these selections that the wild have made no matter where they're at in the draft order. But the Colorado avalanche, they were willing to be bad because they knew what it would mean for them from a talent standpoint. And they reaped the benefits. They were awful for several years to get these players. And now they are reaping the rewards of them. To be fair, we are starting to see Colorado have to deal with the ramifications of cap hits for all of these players. But that's a problem I'd rather have than having to try to find these guys. And so the things to learn for the Minnesota Wilds is that the draft and develop approach is one that usually yields really good results if you have the right talent to do it. And we're getting to the point that it seems like the Wild do have the right talent to develop to fill a lot of key spots in this lineup. The Avs, over the last handful of years, prioritized the top six and have added interchangeable pieces throughout the third and fourth lines, uh, depending on what they need. The Wild have done, for the most part, the opposite. We're starting to see more of an investment in what I would consider core pieces. Jewel Erickson Eck, Matt Boldy, Brock Faber. Um, and so more of that, as these young players bloom and blossom, can then lead you to getting to that spot uh, where you are an actual legitimate contender. But you know the other part of it, and we'll talk about this with Isha uh, for today's second episode. There are a lot of holes in this roster that are going to need to be filled for this Minnesota wild team. Like they're not just one or two pieces away. Like you have to have an overabundance of depth and quality depth. I mean, McKinnon, Rantanen, Landeskog, Nishuskin, Lekkanen, you add Nazem Kadri into that mix back when the Avalanche won the Stanley Cup. You have enough depth in that top six that nobody's going to be able to contend with that. And if you have a defense, even amongst the elites, you can maybe stop one of those lines, but you still have to contend with the other. That's an area that is a glaring weakness for this Minnesota Wild team right now. And we we all, I think, agree that the talent that is in the system is going to make a major impact on this team over the next couple of years. But the other part of this puzzle, too, that I've talked about um, a few times is the way that the successful teams do this is they identify when their window is open. Like when your window is definitively absolutely open and you are a hundred percent going for it, you have to identify that period and you have to prioritize everything in that time frame that helps you out. Like, and I'm I'm talking all the way down to if there are prospects in your system that are not ready to help you for that run, trade them for somebody that is. Like this is this is how teams win in all of sports is like, let's say the wild are okay. 2028, 2027, 2028 is when our window opens. 
Well, if there's anything on the roster that doesn't help you in 2027, 2028, it needs to be used to bring you something that can help you in that moment. And this is where I think GMs a lot of times get stuck in like a, a long-term plan, like a, a slow burn as opposed to having fluid plans that can change depending on how things go, depending on, you know, if you have a bunch of players that hop into the lineup and impress, maybe your window all of a sudden opens a little earlier than you want it to. You can't be afraid of that. You have to have plans that are be, that are able to be moved depending on the moment. And, uh, you know, it, it just, it, it's something that we are going to see with this Minnesota Wild team that 2025, 2026 is probably not the start of the run. Maybe 2026, 2027. But a lot of these pieces that are going to be impact on this roster are going to need the time to become that. And so whatever whatever you need, make sure that you have it ready by the time that window opens because windows far more often slam shut than they do burst open. And so... It's it's going to be interesting to see what is done this season to advance the cup contention to a spot where it's actually a reality. Time will tell, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on things here on Locked on Wild. We appreciate having you on for today's episode. So make sure you hit the like button and follow us on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss out on any new episodes throughout the week. We have new episodes for you every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.